A crocodile terrorized the town, so they cooked and ate him. It's like Uber, but with guns. And lastly, edible robots could end up on a menu near you. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast produced and recorded by a comedian inside a closet. A crocodile was terrorizing a town, so the residents ate it. They do say that revenge is a dish best served with a side of mac and cheese or a potato salad, boy. That's probably my favorite side is potato salad, boy. We have here a remote Australian community. It's very remote. They got uh, lots of wildlife in remote Australian communities. A lot of them, a lot of the wildlife is poisonous. It's dangerous. And you can eat it, apparently. That's good to know. This community took revenge on a massive saltwater crocodile. How big was the crocodile, Jonesy? Good question. You're, uh, I, I know you like details, so let's give it to you. It was 3.6 meters, also known as 11.8 feet. They're calling it a beast. It's a pretty good crocodile. It could fit, it could fit you in, the, in its belly, probably, most of us. It was blamed for devouring various pets in the area, trying to devour the children as well. Children are delicious. They have a diet of sweets, as you know. Now, just a few days ago, the police in this town of Bulla, Bulla is in Australia's northern territory, the police shot this crocodile after deciding it was a significant risk to the community because it was, you know, devouring pets and chasing the children around the swing sets and whatnot, trying to chomp on their their uh, little tiny Air Jordans. Uh, can a crocodile digest Air Jordans? I'm wondering. In a statement, the police say the predator, quote, had been stalking and lunging out of the water at children and adults, also re- reportedly taken multiple community dogs, Multiple community dogs. Now, that's when you're really going to become public enemy number one is when you start eating the community dogs. People go crazy about the dogs. Don't mess with the dogs. You can mess with the humans before you mess with the dogs, at least in the U.S. I don't know if that's trickled down to uh, Australia. I'm sorry. I digest. Let's get back into the story that's really about digestion as well. I'm curious to see what they served with uh, the alligator what goes good with reptile guys this was mango salsa what are you thinking it's australia they probably served it with vegemite did you serve it with vegemite i've eaten vegemite i tried it at the museum of disgusting food it was a pop-up museum in downtown la several years ago and vegemite was at the tasting bar i uh i tried the vegemite it's pretty good i washed it down with a couple crickets yeah I also ate a very stinky, stinky, disgusting cheese. Wow. And uh, that particular cheese, I have to say, it made a young man throw up at the tasting bar um, that day. So out of all the things that people were eating that, you know, you wouldn't expect the cheese to make someone yak right at the tasting bar in the Museum of Disgusting Food. But that's what happened. I got a lot of stories, guys. Now, it says here, in a waste-conscious Move. The crocodile was prepared for a feast in the traditional manner, but not before authorities took the opportunity to give the local children an impromptu crocodile safety lesson, including an up-close look at the dangers within our waterways. That's really good. You should do this in Florida, too. I'm not sure people realize the dangers within the waterways. They seem to like to get up close and personal with crocodiles and alligators over there, making them their pets, putting them on a leash. Bringing them to the uh, Walmart parking lot for a little stroll while they sip wine out of an empty Pringles can. Speaking to public broadcaster ABC, Police Sergeant Andrew McBride. Yeah, Andrew McBride. It's a good old Aussie name. He said the animal was, quote, cooked up into crocodile tail soup. He was, one, he was the one on the barbie. He says a few of the pieces were wrapped up in banana leaves and cooked underground. Cooked underground? Is that a, is that a thing? Crocodile tail soup? That's a thing? Um, I've had oxtail soup, and I enjoyed it very much. Uh, it's a very popular in, uh, in Korean restaurants here. If you go to K-Town in Los Angeles, you can get some real good traditional oxtail soup. It's a little messy, though. I recommend a bib. Uh, here's another quote from Sergeant McBride. 
It was a rather large traditional feast, and there were a few full bellies, I just saying. Yep. It's, right. it's good. Crocodile's delicious from what I've heard. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm down. I'm still, uh, you got to pick out the perfect side dish for that. The cornbread is, a, is probably a go-to, I'd imagine. Jalapeno cornbread, I would say. It says here that uh, both the saltwater and the freshwater crocodile species are protected in Australia, where hunting the animals has been banned by federal law since 1971. Numbers have boomed in recent decades, though, with the Northern Territory now home to some 100,000 crocodiles, according to the local government's count. Thousands more crocodiles are distributed across the north of neighboring states, Queensland and Western Australia. There's a quote from a wildlife specialist. I'm a wildlife specialist. Kristen Hay, Kristen Hay says, any body of water in the top end may contain large and potentially dangerous crocodiles. Yeah, this place is known for that. The Crocodile Hunter. You guys remember Steve? That guy was great, man. Steve was awesome. Sad ending to his career and life, but I was a fan of uh, the, the Crocodile Hunter. That's how I first learned how to do a crocodile, I mean, a crocodile accent. <laughs> Oh, like that's a thing, Jonesy? Do your crocodile accent. Uh, I don't even know what a crocodile sounds like, to be honest with you. I meant to say my Australian accent. And a lot of us Americans, I can speak for probably, uh, learned a, an Australian accent by watching Steve Irwin. That was a real, uh, that was a fun time. Uh, this is really wild, by the way. And, and, and you know, cooking something that in your community is being a nuisance. It's sort of like primitive therapy. Cook and eat something that's been terrorizing you. I mean, this is like primal, man. Prime laws of the jungle going way back to early man. This is in us. Eat or be eaten is a universal value somewhere deep inside us. And it comes from so long ago when we had to eat or be eaten by critters like this. It's like Uber, but with guns. A new rideshare service featuring drivers who carry guns began operating in Phoenix, Arizona. Last week, they began operating without permission from the Arizona Department of Transportation, which is odd. You think that they would get permission from the Arizona Department of Transportation to operate a rideshare service where the drivers are packing the heat. I mean, you don't want to end up with a little Travis Bickle activity. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying Travis Bickle, guys. You know the guy, right? Huh? 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 Any fans of taxi driver? <laughs> Yeah, you would think that you would get uh, permission, but you know, Arizona is the Wild West, literally and figuratively. They just do what they want, ask permission later. I, I recommend Arizona. Go visit it. There's a very large crater out there. You should check it out. It's pretty cool. Don't go in July. Don't go in July. You'll sweat a little bit. Uh, the company's called Black Wolf. They're the gun toting rideshare service. Black Wolf. Yeah, gotta have a tough name and cool name like Black Wolf. <laughs> Need to go to Six Flags? Bad. Black Wolf will take you. Yeah. You got an appointment at high. You got some high tea with your friends? Ladies, hire Black Wolf. We'll take you there. We got guns. We got gas. We'll go. They probably have gas. I'm guessing a gun toting rideshare service is probably anti electric car because that's really un American to ride electric cars, <laughs> if you would believe some of our members of the GOP. Anyways, Black Wolf is TikTok famous, apparently. It says they're TikTok famous, Black Wolf. I haven't seen them on TikTok. Apparently, they're TikTok famous. That, that lends them some legitimacy. You want companies that are all over TikTok these days. And I advise you, go with your medical device on, medical advice on TikTok as well. Those TikTok doctors, they, you know, they're onto something. That's where you want your advice. Apparently, uh, you could solve all your problems by drinking bleach. If, you have, <laughs> if these TikTok doctors were to be trusted. Now, this company here, Black Wolf, says it connects riders with armed drivers who have police, military, or security backgrounds. Phew, thank goodness, because, you know, you know when you're riding with someone who has police, military, or security backgrounds that you're in really good hands. It's, it's impossible for them to pull any, to have pulled any stunts in their past. <laughs> Former police, in other words. <laughs> you you want to ask your driver, why are you no longer a police officer? You know, you probably don't want to. You probably don't want to ask that, is what I'm saying. <laughs> don't be surprised if you get into the car and the guy in the guy driving the black wolf you saw yesterday at the mall doing mall security rounds. And now uh, it says here Black Wolf had to quietly cease their operations in the valley last week. Well, what's the valley? 
somewhere in Arizona, I suppose. I'm scrolling down here. It doesn't say what went wrong in the valley, but uh, you can just imagine, you know, when you're getting driven around by a, <laughs> by a, a driver who uh, failed the police test several times, but is packing heat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But, uh, you know, maybe if you're a paranoid person, this would be for you. I'd imagine you're paranoid. You could use this service to get you around. And there's reasons to be paranoid about your safety when you go out into public. I can't argue with that. This this service also would be helpful, you know, I don't know, maybe if you need a getaway driver for your next heist. Maybe you lost your getaway driver this week because getaway driver looked at his schedule and was like, oh, man, I got a, I got a pickleball that night, you know, and, and you know, I'm a, I'm a team captain, so I got to I got to be there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm sorry. I can't do the bank heist, but you can find another driver. Just call Black Wolf. Now, the founder of Black Wolf is a guy named Kerry King Brown. Uh, of course, he would open a company like this because his first name's Kerry. So, you know, he's basically gone his whole life with a lady name and he's had to overcompensate in every area. So he went into private security. He probably tried to be a cop. I would guess some military service. Definitely lots of Muay Thai classes and uh, bad dates. Bad dates with Kerry didn't end well. <laughs> Just struggling on the dating apps despite the the gym picks. So anyways, Kerry says the idea is to make ride sharing safer by ensuring that riders never have to worry about inappropriate driver behavior, inconsistent ride quality, or ever feeling unsafe. I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't understand this statement. You, you know, riders never have to worry about inappropriate driver behavior because they're carrying a gun. <laughs> Because they're former cops. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. Got that. It all makes sense now, guys. It all makes sense. It says the drivers here have to jump through some hoops to get the gig. Let's find out what they have to have here. Only uh, they have to have under four DUIs, as I'd imagine. And uh, and the uh, the last restraining order has had to have expired. From, from the ex-girlfriend. The drivers must have at least four years of policing military or private security experience, and they have to be CPR certified. Hey, good news. The service is available in Florida. Wow. I mean, that's a place you definitely would need this service. F Florida, for sure. Now, you're probably wondering, how, how does it work? How do I get the Black Wolf driver? Yeah. Sounds like a guy that has some pretty cool tats. Definitely some barbed wire around the old calf arena. You could request an armed or unarmed driver if you want. You can get an unarmed one if you want. Just, uh, they come with a, uh, what do they come with? A little pepper spray, a little pepper spray bottle. Just a book of insults is what they come with. <laughs> Kerry says drivers are responsible for safely transporting a rider, but don't continue security services once the rider's dropped off, so... Don't think the rider's going to come along with you for a robbery in a Walmart. Cameras in the car record live video of the entire trip. Yeah, that should happen in all rideshare services. Rides cost more than your average Uber or Lyft, though. You can't expect to have a, a guy driving you to your destination who's also a war hero to, you know, to do that for the normal cost of, of, a, of a Lyft ride. Or the normal pay of an Uber driver. No, no, no. You have to pay more for these high-level services. He compares it to the high-end Uber Black. Yeah. Now, it doesn't say here uh, whether the cost of the ride includes uh, your own funeral fees. But uh, I'm sure they're working on that. <laughs> uh, you could definitely be ensured that uh, there's a lot of high ratings for these drivers. Five stars sent at gunpoint for sure. Uh, now, the company's hiring. You can go and apply. If you used to be, I don't know, maybe you used to be a bodyguard or something, you can go to blackwolfapp.com and apply to to work for them. I guess so far you just got Florida and Arizona, though, so you got to live in those, those areas. I'm going to guess someone who wants to drive for this company doesn't listen to my podcast, but I'm not sure. What do you guys think about this anyways? Do you think this is cool? acceptable should be unallowed it's just a truly an a genuine expression of where we're going as a society call the show 646-450-2012 Yay! edible robots could end up on a menu very soon according to scientists it's the sound of science 
science. Oh, my throat hurts too much to do that with any gusto. So sorry. It's the sound of science, guys. It's the sound of. It's the sound of. It's the sound of. Science. Fully edible robots could soon be a reality, guys. Would you eat a robot? I'm not sure I want to eat a robot. I mean, I think I'm just going to stick with edible underwear, all right? I draw the line at clothing here. Can't be eating wires and that sort of stuff. Let's learn, though, before we judge. What flavors do the robots come in? Watermelon code? Could I get into computer chips and dip? <laughs> Let's find out. According to scientists behind a project to create truly edible robots and robotic food, fully edible robots could be on the menu. The article says food and technology are intrinsically linked, whether it's in the increasing amount of high-tech kitchen gadgets that surround you or the fact that you could just have any food that you want delivered to you through the touch of a button on your smart device. Now we have a group of scientists at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology that are bringing food and technology together in a brand new way by making edible robots and robotic food. Does that mean the food can just crawl across the table, crawl up my chest, and then just jump right into my mouth? That's pretty cool. Let's find out what this is. The project's called RoboFood. Ooh, boy. It's probably not much different than eating all these microplastics that we already have in our daily diet. So, you know, <laughs> we're already heading this way anyways. Now, these nerds are hoping that by, by combining food science and robotic science, these edible robots could provide some life-saving nutrition to human beings. They could supply vaccines and supplements to endangered animals, reduce farming waste, and even warn us when the food itself is safe to eat. What about when the food isn't safe to eat? It's already in your stomach. Self-destruction in 10, 9. <laughs> the director is Dario Floriano. What a name, Dario Floriano. My goodness. Dario Floriano sounds like a subject for a swimsuit issue. Dario Floriano was inspired by a comment made by fellow researcher Jun Shintake to create this project. Shintake noted that the main difference between robots and living systems is that robots can't be eaten by other life forms. This then developed into RoboFood, as it's known today, which aims to create a library of smart edible materials, develop the manufacturing of edible robots and robotic foods, and even create edible components, including sensors and mechanical structures. I still uh, want to know what, fla what, what flavors and what forms is it in. Is this an ice cream? What, 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 what are we doing here, man? Is it just like a cheese board? <laughs> the Robo Food Project has received funding from yada, yada, yada. Okay, got it, got it. It's a bunch of rich people that are bored. They don't know what to do with their money. They're like, ah, ro throw it against the wall. Robots, we eat them. Okay, let's do it. 20 million, here you go. Run with it, run with it. Now we got researchers at RoboFood discovering that starch and tannin can make an ideal glue replacement for robots and computers. Meanwhile, substances such as gelatin and rice cookies can replace rubber and foam. Okay, so they're just trying to make like a whole robot and computer out of stuff that you can eat. I guess if you're stranded, you know, about this, you know, this Mars experiment's going to really be a mess. Uh, you know, you guys, I hope you're all aware of that. Um, the idea that we're all going to terraform, we're going to terraform Mars and make that our new home is just a pipe dream as far as I'm concerned. That's, we're going to run into some serious problems out there. And not to mention, I mean, the radiation already, just stop it, stop it. But if you're trapped anywhere now, apparently you could just eat your laptop. That's good to know. I mean, this is something down the road with space travel we might have to utilize where we're lost in space and then we have to eat the capsule. As it stands, RoboFood has already produced a drone made of rice cakes that's held together with edible oils and chocolates. Ooh, delicious. Imagine eating a drone. I can't even... You're gonna be, this is like... The, you know where this is going, right? It's like, please don't eat me. <laughs> please. Hal, could you slow roast yourself at 225 degrees? I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. And I'm all out of rosemary. Now, uh, the drone, the dr yeah, back to the drone, they said it's 50% edible, the drone that they built. It could be used to help locate a lost person, and uh, but actually provide nutrients needed in an emergency. So rather than like having the drone just deliver a bag of Chick-fil-A, the drone just lands in the person's lap who's dying out in the Mojave Desert or whatever, and then the person can just eat the drone. It all makes sense, guys, when you break it down like that. 
If you're hungry for more, you can check out the Robo Food website to keep up with their latest projects and innovations and decide maybe you want to make a lifestyle change. Maybe you want to become a, a roboticarian. You know? So uh, go to robofood.com to learn some more. Maybe you could even uh, be a volunteer to, you know, they, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they need some taste testers of these robots. Just get paid to eat robots, man. I mean, what a crazy time that we live in that you could probably get paid to eat some robots and some drones and some laptops and some smartphones and maybe, a, 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 you know, maybe a, maybe you could eat a sex robot too, you know, which is nice because the, the sex robot can eat you, but then you can eat the sex robot. All right, I'm just running with it. Yay! Hey, my friends, how you doing? This is your host, Jonesy, just saying what's up. This is called the outro where I give thanks and praise and just say what's up. Give you a status of my, my own life, if you give a damn. I'm still, I'm a little sick, but in the throat is really not working right. But, uh, you know, we're, we're making it work in the closet, guys. We're just doing what we can. You should have heard me yesterday. I couldn't speak at all. I uh, called my stepdad on Father's Day to, and whispered Happy Father's Day. That was, that was a strange experience, but it was Happy Father's Day. I just want you to know Happy Father's Day. How are you? That was a good time. Uh, but, you know. We do what we can, guys. We push through. I want to give thanks and praise now to people that joined the Patreon. I had a lot of people joining the Patreon lately. Two more over the weekend. I'm so, so pleased. We have here the username A Dragon Lives Here. A Dragon Lives Here. I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know what that's from. It's probably a, a book series, I'd imagine. Uh, but A Dragon Lives Here just joined the Patreon. So we just want to welcome A Dragon Lives Here. It's, it's funny to keep saying that, but A Dragon Lives Here has shown some support right here. The ultimate support by joining the Patreon. So I'm so grateful for A Dragon Lives Here. The care and the support that A Dragon Lives Here has shown by joining the Patreon for Weird AF News. I mean, I don't want to take this moment for granted. So just welcome and thank you. Really cool profile pic too. Wow, A Dragon Lives Here is cool for sure. Also, Bunny Fan. Bunny Fan joined the, the Patreon. So we want to give Bunny a shout out on Weird AF News. We're not sh I'm not sure where Bunny lives. I'm not sure where a dragon lives here lives. Uh, but, you know, these people out there finding my show, getting some sort of joy out of it, and then deciding to support, become a member of the Patreon. And so for, I'm forever grateful for this sort of activity. I really am. And I just want to, you know, give credit where credit's due. And say welcome to the Patreon. I just put a, for those of you who are in the Patreon, I just put in an awesome thing in there this morning. I got up and I felt inspired to write a story about uh, something that happened to me uh, regarding one of my heroes. It, and I guess the theme of the story is, uh, they say, be, be careful, meeting your heroes can be a letdown. And so this is kind of that kind of theme where um, somebody that I was uh, excited to meet it, the whole thing ended up being quite a quite a letdown. So it's a funny story. It's true. And I, I put that in the Patreon today. And I'm going to start doing a series in there where I share these anecdotes about my life. Because there's some... I've, I've Yeah, I've, I've had some adventures. And I, I sometimes talk about them on the show. There's others I can't really... It's inappropriate to talk about them on the show. So I'm going to put some of that in the Patreon. If you just didn't become curious now to join the Patreon, then you'll never be. But like hearing some of the stories I have that are inappropriate for the podcast, trust me, I got some good ones. I got some good ones. So I'll be sharing that in my Patreon in, an, in a new series called Cool Story Bro. <laughs> Um, and I'm pretty excited about that. I got I got kind of inspired to write after um, doing some doing a lot of reading uh, lately. So reading some novels that have just blew me away, and it's just kind of I used to want to be a writer, and, and so not. But I, I you know I, I do other things, but I I like to write. So anyways, I'm going to use the Patreon as a place to put some like stories in there that I think are cool, and that I f I think will you'll find entertaining. So those of you who are in the Patreon, make sure you read that. I posted it today. It's called Cool Story, Bro. You'll love it. And then I'm going to post more. I'll try to post as, as much as I can those anecdotes. Uh, anyways, join the Patreon and get a little dose of this stuff. I think you'll enjoy it. It's uh, patreon.com slash weirdafnews or download the Patreon app on your phone. Do a search for Weird AF News. Uh, also, what else, what else? Go to the website, weirdafnews.com, and click on the Patreon banner, and uh, check that out anyways. It's a great way to support the show. I appreciate everybody. I'll keep this brief, and uh, my email, if you want to send an article or say hi, it's funnyjones at gmail.com, and the number 646-450-2012. We'll see you tomorrow. Good luck with your life, man. <laughs>